Hey, it's Joe with Joe Lee Farms. Welcome back to the channel. What a glorious day. Sun's come out, had a great rain last night, and we're really happy for it. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about sowing seeds of hope. So as all of you know, we're gardeners here. We like to grow our own food. We grow our own food for a multitude of reasons. We like to grow our own food because, quite frankly, gardening, extremely good for the soul, good for the mind, helps with depression, things like that. Having your hands in the dirt replaces the floor on your skin that's been removed from all the hand washing that we do. And the floor is very important to help fight against bacteria and to keep you from getting sick. So uh, we grow food for all those reasons and we know exactly what's in our food. It's not sprayed and uh, we can trust it. We know it's got really good uh, mineral content, really good vitamin content in our food. We've tested it, we know it's good. The other reason we grow is because we like to give food away. We give away at least 10% of everything we grow, if not more, sometimes a lot more. And so I know a lot of you have seen the video with Bob Higgins and the Vilcabamba Community Kitchen. And we just want to tell you that we're going to try to participate in that. Now this isn't to draw attention to us, but we're going to grow a lot more green beans. Many of you know that I like to grow green beans. Right now we're growing the purple pole beans in the greenhouse. And I'm just about ready to plant here in our little lower 40 bush beans. So bush beans are much shorter, um, but also very prolific. And we're going to grow some of the green and the purple bush beans this time, and we'll try them both. So our plan in all this is to try to give the community kitchen as much green beans as we possibly can. And they'll make a pound of green beans go a long, long way, trust me. Put it in soup, put it in vegetable medleys, things like that, so it'll be fun. So what we had in this hookah culture bed here in the lower 40 was the calabasa squash. Like you see here, there's a little bitty one that was left over. So you'll see the before and after pictures where we, before we tore out the garden, and then you'll see this after we've torn out the garden. So um, we've added compost to here, and we're going to start planting this with the seeds. We're very fortunate, had a great rain last night, got it soaking wet, so it's gonna be in good shape to uh, go ahead and work the soil and do what we gotta do. We're gonna take my little triangular hoe, which I'll show you in a minute, and we're going to make some furrows, probably about four, sometimes I do five here, and then we'll drop our seeds in. So one of the things that I've learned about this is bush beans will tend to fall over sometimes and the beans will get on the soil. And when they're on the soil, they're a lot more likely to get bugs and disease. So there's a couple things you can do is plant them deeper so that they'll have a better root system, especially if you're growing in heavy compost like we are. Uh, you can also do a floor to weave with some uh, string and weave in and out of your plants and that will uh, help support them and keep them upright. I like to plant them thick so they hold each other upright and uh, that just kind of helps the whole situation out. Um, so I'll show you some pictures of what Florida weaves like and you can do that stringing if you want. I don't usually need to do that because I plant them pretty deep and pretty thick. All right, we're gonna get started making some rows. Hang in there. Okay, so we're gonna get started making our little furrows here. Our bed kind of turns at an angle. See, I love this triangular hoe. This was made by a guy in town and it really works well for this. Um, he made the handle, which is a little short for a tall guy like me, but it works fine for this hugel bed because it's raised up higher. And so very quickly, I'm gonna make some rows here to show you what we do. Now I've had some beans soaking over there, getting ready for this. And the beans are soaking in water with a little bit of inoculant. The inoculant's kind of important. It's gonna help you, uh, those beans grow better all the way around. If you wanna learn more about inoculant, you can go to the Johnny's Seeds website. And on that website, they will have a big section about why you should use inoculants. And of course they sell inoculants. And uh, that's where I get mine. Mine's kind of old, but it still works. I keep it stored to where it's not a problem. And the inoculants are going to be very useful for us. Now we grow green beans in this bed a lot. As I said, the squash just came out. So uh, we're growing green beans next. These green beans, once they're done, we're gonna leave them in 
the bed here and we're going to allow them to dry up and leave the roots in and that way they will fix nitrogen into the little root nodules and those nodules will hold that nitrogen in the soil. You don't want to just pull your green beans out of the soil when they're done. You want to cut them off and leave those roots in there. Yeah, I think I get five real good rows here. That's what I usually do. And it's going to work. So, you know, three inches deep, second knuckle deep is fine. It'll all work here. All right, so we'll grab some green beans. As I said, I'm going to use two different types. We love Provider. Provider is a great bean. This one is from Johnny Seed. Or, excuse me, this is from Seed Savers Exchange. And when I say deep, I mean like two to three inches apart. And uh, don't be afraid to put too many in there. You can always thin them out if you have to. And so this is really all there is to it. Just drop them in the soil like this. Okay, now we're going to get some of the purple ones. These are called amethyst, and they are from Johnny Seeds. So, you know, if you want to help us, you can. If you know you're going to be busy in Ecuador, you could throw some of these seeds in your suitcase, as long as they're the certified organic ones uh, from either Johnny's or High Mowing Seeds or Seed Savers Exchange or place like that. Well, we know that they have a good reputation for their organic products. So if you want to throw those in your suitcase and bring them down, that'd be great. Um, they do check sometimes suitcases at the airport, but I've never met anyone that's had seeds taken away. I brought them in many, many times myself, and they're just fine. Nobody's ever said a word. Usually the time of night I come through, the guards are all asleep anyway. But... Um, yeah, that would be a big help to us. We do try to save our own seeds, but you know, things happen sometimes and we don't get a good batch to collect seeds from. We do run the possibility of running out. So that's a way that you can help us to uh, help other people here in Ecuador. We'll go back with some more of the other seeds. Now I've let these soak just till they start to wrinkle a little bit, you know. 15, 20 minutes is all we need. All you're doing is making sure that that outer coat on the seed gets a little bit uh, soft. It just stands a better chance at, at sprouting. Now, you don't have to do that. I've planted plenty of seeds without doing this. I still do from time to time. But, you know, every little bit helps. It gets a little bit better chance at this happening. We want to be successful, so Sometimes taking a couple other little extra measures is a good idea. All right, so we got five rows planted right there. Seeds are in the row. Now we'll just take our little hole and we'll cover them back up. And I don't pack these in or anything. I just cover them up real good and then I'll water them in just so it kind of takes all the oxygen away from the seed there and uh, allows that real good soil to seed contact. That's the secret to all this is soil to seed contact. Every good farmer knows that. Commercial farmers that plant corn, they know that. And uh, they actually have little wheels on their planters that press it down to make sure they get good contact. I can see some stood up there. We'll get them covered. And you can do this with your hands if you like. Any way you want to do it. Go along afterwards. You see a seed poking up out of the ground. You can just take your finger, poke it back in the ground. 
and it'll be just fine. Even the next day, for some reason, seeds poking out, you can just poke it down. If you want to tamp it down, you can use this into the hole like this. Just give it a little firm little tap and that'll work great. So I think you're going to see, we're not changing the directions of our video, but we are including some new things. And some of the new things that we're going to include are things in our daily lives. This channel has always been about our move to Ecuador and how we live in Ecuador. So part of how we live in Ecuador is trying to help other people. We've always done that. We've done it no matter where we live, so why should we change here? Especially in such an impoverished country as this. Some people in this uh, country don't have anything. And uh, giving somebody a couple pounds of green beans that are ready to cook might be a whole big difference in their lives. Who's to say what that little one act of kindness and generosity might mean? Okay, so that's it. We'll water it in now. And this will take about five or six days and they'll sprout up out of there and they'll be great. Can't wait to uh, show you what it looks like when they're full grown and ready to start picking. Thanks for tuning in. Ciao for now. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please like, subscribe, and share.